these are the bones of the hand. We start with the carpus. The hand is a useful apparatus in man for prehensile and brachiating activities. The palm is the fleshy part of the hand placed ventrally. Layer 1 of the palm contains skin divided into the following parts. Thena eminence, hypothena eminence, mid palmar area, and the pulp of the fingers. On the skin of the palm, we have the following creases. Transverse creases, proximal digital creases, middle digital creases, and distal digital creases. In sum, this layer contains skin with transverse creases, proximal digital creases, middle digital creases, distal digital creases, hypothenar eminence, thenar eminence, fingers and pulp of the fingers. This is layer 2. It is a layer of superficial fascia. To recap, we have removed the skin and its constituent parts, such as the skin of the roof of the thinner space, hypothenal space, mid palmar space, and the structures below the skin, which includes the superficial fascia. Palmar branches or medial and ulnar nerves. Proper digital nerves. Palmar digital veins. Palmar venous plexus. In sum, we have exposed the superficial fascia which contains palmar branch or median nerve and palmar branch of all the nerve. The lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm, the proper digital veins, the palmar digital veins and the palmar venous plexus. The layer of superficial fascia contains the following structures. We have now reached the palmar aponeurosis layer. Removal of the superficial fascia exposes the palmar aponeurosis. It also exposes the flexor retinaculum and also the fibrous flexor sheath. But in this layer, we shall see the palmar aponeurosis and the structures we surround it. To reach this layer, we have removed the superficial fascia, the palmar venous plexus, and the proper digital veins. We can now see the palmar aponeurosis, digital nerves, and vessels. The roof of the thinner space has now been removed to expose the structures underlying it. At this stage, we can only see two muscles, adductor pollicis brevis and the flexor pollicis brevis. In the hypothenal space, we can only see the abductor digiti minimi. In sum, we have exposed the palmar aponeurosis, common digital nerves and vessels, then a space which contains two muscles at this stage, abductor pollicis brevis and flexor pollicis brevis, the ulnar artery, and the hypothenal space which contains only one muscle, the abductor digiti minimi. Layer 3 contains the following structures.
we have now arrived at the superficial palmar arch layer. After removal of the palmar aponeurosis and the common digital nerves and vessels. We can now see clearly the mid palmar space containing the blood vessels of the superficial palmar arch and nerves. Flexor retinaculum is also clearly seen. The lumbricals, which arise from the radial side of the flexor digitorum profundus, can be clearly seen. The fibrous flexor sheet for each finger can also be clearly seen at this level. So also is the median nerve. and the superficial branch of the ulnar artery and the superficial branch of the radial artery together they form the superficial palmar arch in sum we have exposed this layer which contains the fibro fibrous flexor sheath lumbricals superficial palmar arch which contains superficial branch of the ulnar artery superficial branch of the radial artery and the median nerve This is layer 5, the layer of superficial flexor tendons. Please check all items on the web page links. To recap, we have removed superficial palmar arch, proper digital nerves and vessels, and the median nerve. Please use the dissector to interact with all the links. I know where flexor sheath surrounds all the flexor tendons, in particular the ulnar bursa, which is the bursa that surrounds all the flexor tendons together with the flexor tendon of the little finger. The tendons include flexor digitorum superficialis, which is superficial tendons of a long flexor and the flexor digitorum profundus, which is found only minimally in this layer. The flexor digitorum takes its origin from the common flexor origin and from other structures surrounding this origin and runs downwards on the cover of the flexor retinaculum to reach the palm at the mid palmar space. It reaches the palm at the mid palmar space with its tendons which gain their attachment or insertion by splitting into two to accommodate the tendons of its deep neighbor the flexor digitorum profundus. They gave their insertion into the base of the middle phalanges. While the superficialis is supplied in its entirety by the median nerve, the profundus has two nerves which supply it, with its honor head being supplied by the ulnar nerve and the radial part by the median nerve through its anterior interosseous branch. The radial bursa is the synovial flexor sheath that surrounds the flexor pollicis longus, which is placed on the thumb. The long flexor takes their origin from the common flexor origin at the medial epicondyle of the humerus. The flexor pollicis longus takes its origin from the front of the radius and it is found in the radial bursa. 
we have now seen the last of the short muscles of the thumb, which is the opponent's policies. In the thinner eminence, these muscles are three in number. The abductor policies brevis, the flexor policies brevis, and the opponent's policies. They take origin mainly from the scaphoid tubercle, the trapezium, and the flexor retinacle. And they gain insertion mainly to the base of proximal phalanx of the thumb. We have also seen most of the hypothenar eminence muscles. This is the opponent's digitum minimi, and we have seen the abductor digitum minimi. They also take origin from inside the palm, from the hook of hamid, and the flexor retinacle. They gain attachment mainly to the base of the proximal phalanx of the little finger. The last of the spaces in the palm are the pore spaces found on the fingers. The following are found on layer 5. Common sinive flexor sheath, flexor digitorum superficialis tendons, flexor digitorum profundus tendons, flexor policies longus tendon, opponent's policies, Opponents dig it with minimum, on a bossa, radial bossa, and a pop space. In sum, in this layer, we have exposed the following common sinew flexor sheet, tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis, tendons of flexor digitorum profundus, tendon of flexor policies longus, opponents policies, opponents dig it minimum. We have now arrived at the layer of the deep flexor tendons. There's only one deep flexor tendon, and that is the tendon of the flexor digitorum profundus. To recap, we have removed the flexor digitorum superficialis tendon and the common synovial flexor sheath. We are now seeing the deep tendons clearly the carpal tunnel and the flexor digiti minimi which is the last muscle of the hypothena eminence. The layer of the deep flexor tendons contain the deep long flexors and the carpal tunnel. In some, we have exposed fibrous flexor sheets and the carpal tunnel. We have now reached the adductor policies layer. To recap, we have removed the flexor retinaculum, carpal tunnel, long flexor tendons, thinner muscles, hypothenar muscles. This is the deep branch of the ulnar nerve and artery. The palmar metacarpal arteries, adductor policies, its oblique head, and its transverse head. Palmar ligaments of the metacarpophalangeal joints, the adductor policies compartment, which contains the adductor muscle. The adductor layer therefore consists of the following adductor policies, the branch of ulnar artery, medium plantar, metacarpal arteries, and palmar ligaments of metacarpal phalangeal joints. To recap, we have removed the adductor policies. We have now reached the deep palmar arch layer. It contains the palmar interosa, 
it contains the first dorsal interruptions. It also contains the deep palmar arch, which consists of the deep branch of the ulnar artery and the deep branch of the radial artery. The deep branch of the ulnar nerve. The first palmar metacarpal artery. The palmar carpal arch. This layer, which is the layer of the deep palmar arch, contains the deep palmar arch, the deep branch of ulna nerve, palmar carpal arch, palma interossi, and the first dorsal interosseous muscle. In sum, we have exposed the branches of the deep palmar arch, the plantar metacarpal arteries, which are the lateral branches and then the branches of a deep ulna nerve. We are now in a new layer called the layer of interosci and joints. And to reach this layer, we have removed all neurovascular structures. We have exposed the second, the third, and the fourth dorsal interossi. The hook of Hamid. Capitate. Pisiform. Lunate Palmar radiocarpal ligament of the wrist joint Pisohamate ligament Pisometacarpal ligament In some, we have exposed dorsal interosci, some bones and landmarks such as the capitate, hook of hermit, pisiform, lunate, and also the palmar radiocarpal ligament. Bones of the hand include the carpals, metacarpals, and the phalanges. We are now in the last layer of the palm, which is a layer of bones. To recap on how to reach this layer, we had removed palmar radiocarpal ligament of the wrist joint and the dorsal interossi. The couple of bones include scaphoid, Lunate Triquetrium and Pisiform. These are bones of the proximal row. The distal row includes Trapezium, Trapezoid, Capitate, and Hamate. The metacarpals are five in number. Metacarpal 1 is for the thumb. Metacarpal 2 is for the index finger. Metacarpal 3 is for the middle finger. Metacarpal 4 is for the ring finger. And metacarpal 5 is for the little finger. The phalanges are 14 in number. Proxima, middle, and distal. For the four media digits with only proximal and distal for the thumb. In sum, we have exposed the bones of the hand, which includes the carpal bones, the metacarpal bones, and the phalanges.
layer 10 consists of bones. The copper bones are arranged in two rows. The scaphoid, the lunate, the traquitum, and the pisiform are in the proximal row. The trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate, and the hamate are in the distal row. We then have metacarpals, which are five in number, one, two, three, four, five, and the phalanges, which are 14 in number. Let us now examine the various spaces and compartments that are in the palm.